right, this is the last section of this chapter. And um, let's grab a uh, shape. Let's grab this shape. This is what I used in the other class. So I'll copy that and paste it. All right, so here's the shape. And let's make it a little bit bigger. So here's one shape. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy that shape. You watching? Let's pay attention, please. All right, I'm going to copy this shape, and I'm going to paste it. Control C, Control V. You guys ever do uh, desktop publishing? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and almost every program, not just this program, but a lot of different programs. Control C is copy. Control V, which is right next to the C. That's why they put it. That's why they used V instead of uh, uh, P for uh, paste. Because Control P is meant for what? Print. Print. Right. So you don't use Control P to paste. You Control V, which is right next to the C. And anyway, that's what I've done. So tell me something. I copied and I pasted. What's true about these two figures right now? <laughs> They're congruent to each other, right? Now here's another desktop publishing hint. If I took this right here, I didn't touch anything else on the keyboard. I just grabbed this with my mouse and I moved it over. Um, did it change? Did it stay the same shape? No, it changes shape and everything, right? If I could change shape like this, I could change shape like that and everything. But what if, let's go back to this again. Yeah, what if I wanted to keep it the same proportion and keep it the same shape? Hit the shift key. Anybody ever do that? Not Have you ever worked with Word or anything, stuck a picture in a Word document to make a some project? Right, and a lot of people do this. They'll put a picture here, and they'll say, "Oh, it doesn't fit my block, so I'll do oh, yeah, this." And then it squishes that. people's heads, and it, right. And I did that a long time ago. With the exactly. So what you do is you hit the right, it hit, hit the shift key. So I'm right now. You can't see it, but I'm hitting the shift key. Then I move the cursor, and look what happens. Right. It keeps it the same proportion. Look, even if I move my mouse way down here, you see that it's not changing the shape of it, is it? It's keeping the same exact shape. It's just changing the size of it. So, two figures that have the same shape but different sizes would be considered what to each other? Similar. similar. We had a whole chapter, didn't we, on similar figures, okay, similar polygons. Well, so that's what's true about these. These two things are similar to each other. Um, let's call this one A, B, C, D. This happens to be a trapezoid, but this isn't always true just about a trapezoid. This could be true about any similar figures, okay? Um, watch, I'm going to throw something at you that you probably haven't seen before, but... I just thought of doing this that uh, first period, so I'll show you guys too. Instead of this is A B C D. Instead of calling this E F G H and saying that angle A is equal to angle uh, E and all that kind of stuff, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to call this A, but I don't want to just call it A. I'm going to put a little slash over top of, of it. We call that A prime. Has anybody ever seen or heard of that before? Yes. Oh, did you? Okay, so I just call it A prime. What it basically means is basically just like another letter. It's saying another letter. Um, it's just so that you see a relationship between A prime and A. So I wouldn't have put the A prime right here, would I? I would put the A prime in the same spot where I had the original A. Everybody see that? Okay. Um, so what would I call this angle over here? B prime, and then C prime and D prime. So that's kind of a thing. The first time I ever saw that was when I was in college, right? But it's just kind of a nice way when you see a relationship between the angles and that kind of thing, just say A and A prime. Because if I said A and E, I mean, I could tell you that they were equal to each other, but that doesn't really match up in our head, does it? When I hear A and A prime, you're like, ooh, they must go together, right? Does that make sense? So that's kind of a neat way to do it. I don't think you're going to see that in the book, but that's something that you might see some other time. All right, so anyway, here's this uh, polygon, here's this polygon, and um, if they are similar to each other, there is a relationship between their areas. So watch this. Now these have to be similar, so let me uh, just do this. Let's say polygon ABCD, ABCD is similar to polygon what? A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime extra words to say, but that's okay. It kind of looks nice because the A and the A prime go together, B and B prime go together, and so on. Everybody see that? So we know that these two things, these two figures are these two figures are similar to each other. Um, what are we going to talk about, though? What's this whole chapter been about? Finding the what of a figure? Area. Finding the area. Okay, so what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the area of this one. I'll tell you what, I'll call this one the area, we'll call this 
polygon 1, okay? So the area of 1 and the area of 2. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't do this in the last class. I don't know. I just thought of it. So watch this. Instead of, nah, I tell you what, forget that. That's going to make it more confusing. Let's just keep it as simple as we can. Here's a little formula that, re that, um, that relates the area to each other. Now look, do you think the area of this big one is going to be the same exact area of this one if they're similar to each other? No. Um, there is a proportion that's true. Absolutely. There's going to be a proportion, but we're not really sure what the proportion is just yet. I mean, you can make guesses about it, but there is a proportion to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, here's the formula. I'm not going to show you how they really get it, but I guess I, I probably could, could go through some background to show you, but I'm not going to. But the area of the big one, okay, which is A, B, C, D, if I compare it to the area of the smaller one, a prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, okay? If I take this area, if I knew the area of this one and I divided it by the area of this, it's going to equal another ratio. Remember we did scale factor when we did these similar figures? So A, B, and what else go together? What are, what's, um, uh, what's the word? It starts with C. I'm trying to think of it. Why can't I think of it? Um, corresponding, okay? For some reason, I had congruence stuck in my head, but the corresponding. What is corresponding to side AB over here? A prime, B prime, okay? So watch this. If I took AB, the length of AB, whatever number that is, all right, and then I compared it to A prime, B prime, that is not the relationship between them, okay? So if I just took this side divided by this side to be the scale factor, the ratio of the areas do not equal the scale factor, but they equal... The scale factor, that's the scale factor right there, the scale factor squared, all right, because there's a relationship between, you know, base times height, things are squared, and that kind of thing, all right? There's your formula right there. Write that down. That's the new formula. So if you know the area of this one and you know the area of this one, you compare them, divide them. Now, I could have taken the smaller one divided by the bigger one, but then what would I have to do here? I'd have to go A prime, B prime over... A, B. Make sense? So as long as they relate to each other. So look, the big one's on top, the big one's on top here. The uh, smaller one's on the bottom here, the smaller side's on the bottom here. So make sure that they do correspond to each other like this. And that is your... There's a lot of talking, okay? Well, let's pay attention, please. It's rude. So there, there's a definite relationship between those two, and that's what it is. Yes? Are you always going to do... Like the big shape divided by the small it shape. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one's being it doesn't matter which one's being divided by which, but you do divide the areas, okay? Compare one area to the other. You could have compared this one to this one, or you could have compared this one to this one. Right? You could have gone the big over the small or the small over the big. Alright, but you have to make sure that these sides are corresponding, okay? This is the big over if this is the big polygon over the small polygon, this would have to be the big side over the small side. Make sense? Yeah. But you gotta square it. Alright, that's very important. Let's do an example. And um, let's see what it looks like. Now it kind of looks like it's a right triangle in the in the picture in the book. But they don't tell you that that's a right angle. So can you make? Can you just make a blanket assumption that it's a right? No, you can't. Actually, let's make this just a tad smaller. Okay. So there's one triangle. Now watch what they do. Um, I'm going to copy and paste, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to twist it around. Like, actually, I don't want to twist it like that. Um, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to twist it like this. So it's probably going to look like that. Something like that. All right? And let's bring this up a little bit further. Let's label this thing. This is JKL. And this one is P and R and Q. And they also tell you uh, what is similar to what, so that you know which angles match up with each uh, angle, which ones are corresponding angles, which ones are corresponding sides. So they tell you that triangle JKL is similar to triangle uh, PQR. So watch what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do, before I read anything else, I'm going to mark this stuff up, JKL and PQR. So look, J and P are equal to each other, right? 
because J is first and P is first here. So I'll mark those equal to each other. Uh, K and Q are equal to each other, so I'm going to mark these. Okay. Austin, is that you doing that noise? You need to stop if that's you. All right, and uh, and then L and R, we'll just leave L and R blank, okay? So that's I think that's kind of important to know which ones match up with what, because we're going to do that scale factor thing, and uh, you're going to have to know which side goes with on one side or one polygon goes with the, that side on the other polygon. So look, this is a t given as 12, this is given as 15, and they also tell you the area of JKL, the smaller one. Okay, so the area of this triangle right here is 30 square inches. Okay, what they're going to ask is to find the area of this big triangle. That's what they want you to find. So look what you have. They give you one area, they ask for another area, but they also give you two sides. Now those two sides have to be corresponding sides for this thing to work. Let's make sure that they're corresponding sides. How do you know? Because look, this one goes up and down and this one goes across. Are they the ones that match up? Well, let's see. How do we know if they're corresponding sides? Which angle they're opposite. That's that. exactly right. That's opposite the angle with no arc marked, right? And look over here. What's angle? What's opposite the one with no arc over here? The 15. So are 12 and 15, are they corresponding sides? Yes, they are. So let's compare the small one to the big one. So if I can, actually, let's, let's not compare them that way. I'm trying to find the area of the big one, aren't I? To make your math just a little bit easier, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the area of the large one, which is what? PQR, PQR, and I'm going to compare it to what? The area of the other one. So this is the area of PQR, and I'm going to compare that to the area of the smaller one. I'm not even going to write area, because I know the area of the smaller one. What is the area of the smaller one? They tell it to you. It's 30. They tell it right there. Right? Anybody watching? You guys seem a little dazed. All right, look. I'm going to compare the area of the big one to the area of the small one. They told me the area of the small one. Got it? What should that equal? Well, that should equal the corresponding sides. So these two, 15 and 12, are corresponding to each other. I could go 15 over 12, or if you wanted to, you don't have to, but if you wanted to, you could reduce that. What does that reduce to? 5 fourths, right? So let's compare it. Let's use 5 fourths. So it would be 5 fourths. Do I just write 5 fourths, though? What's my formula say I do? Come on, pay attention. Come on, come on. Wake up, wake up. I know it's a little warm in here, but come on, answer me. What do you do to that scale factor? You, you don't just put the scale factor there, 5 over 4. You do what to it? You square it, okay? Anybody here today? You guys are loud enough when you're talking about other stuff, but now I ask you a question. You don't say a word. So I have to square that thing right there. You know what would be easier than just putting a big old parentheses and a squared? might be easier if we just do that. Isn't that the same exact thing? Squared everything in that parentheses? Now what are we trying to do? We're trying to solve for what? I wrote it right here. A equals question mark. I'm trying to find the area of the big triangle, PQR. So this is my variable. This is what I'm trying to solve for right there. The math is easy. How do you get rid of the 30? It's being divided. How do you get rid of something? You don't even have to cross multiply because I put the I put my variable, what I'm trying to solve for, on the top. One step. If I cross multiply, I have to do a couple steps. I can do this in one simple step. How do I get rid of something that's being divided? I multiply. All right? We've done that tons of times, haven't we? All right? Are you here today? Benjamin, yeah. Look like you're looking way beyond me. You don't even, <laughs> you don't have any notes out. You're not writing any of this down. That can't be good, can it? All right. So there you go. So watch. You're gonna throw all that into your calculator. So the area of triangle PQR is gonna equal whatever this is in your calculator. So we just plug it in the calculator and see what we get. 5 squared, I knew that already, it's 25 times 30, and then divide that by 16, and you get 48 point, let's say 9, or 46, I'm sorry, 46.9, so 46.9, it is area, so it's what? It's square inches, and there's 
your area of that triangle. You would have not been able to find this area of the triangle if all you knew, if the only thing you knew was that information from that one big triangle, you would not be able to find the area of that triangle because all you knew was one side. You didn't even know if it was a right triangle or not. Not that that would have helped you, but there's nothing you could have done. So what'd you do? They took a, a similar triangle to it. They knew some stuff about this little triangle. That helped us find the area of the big triangle. Okay, There's definitely that relationship between the two triangles. When can you do this? With any two triangles at all? No, they have to be what to each other? They have to be similar right there. Okay, The triangles have to be similar for this thing to actually work. Make sense? Make sure you square this. This is what a lot of people tend to forget to do. Okay, a lot of people will just put this side over this side and then just solve for it, but you got to square this. Okay, you could have just put one big squared out here, or you could have just squared these individually, like I did right here. Make any sense? Alright. Alright, that's it. Let's uh, do some problems. So it's section 11.5, and we're doing page 8.05. And you're going to do 6 to 13. There it is. Have fun with that.